Hey everyone, this is the Zion Crane 3S and I'm going to tell you um, how to fix balancing issues, motor issues um, that some other people have covered. Um, I'm just going to talk about my experiences with them and what I did to fix mine. But one thing I haven't seen in anybody's video is how to actually solve the balancing problem when you're trying to balance this particular motor. You're able to balance this guy, this guy, but this motor, no, you're not able to get a perfect balance and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. As you can see, we have achieved perfect balance on this motor right now. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do that along with uh, talk about some other problems that I've had. All right. So the first issue that we're going to talk about is the balancing issue around this motor. Um, and it lies right here in this arm. Actually, it's the physical connection of this extension or without the extension. You can see right now that it is unbalanced. This is how it was when I first installed it. Um, you can see it, it moves here, kind of moves here a little, a little bit more on this side. Um, so you can definitely see that there's a little more weight below this part of the motor. And what's happening here is because this is a multi-piece arm, there has to be some sort of loose tolerancing um, in order for these to slip together. If they were perfectly the same size, external and internal dimensions, um, they would be a press fit uh, connection and you wouldn't be able to assemble your gimbal. So by default, Zion from the factory has to have a loose tolerance, and I'm using that term loosely <laughs> um, because it's still pretty tight tolerance. You can't most people are not even going to be able to tell that there's movement in this arm, but there is. And that's what the balancing is there. That's what the balancing issue is. So we're going to loosen all of these guys here and um, kind of realign this and tighten them back up. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So there is a couple thousand slop here. And I don't know if you can see, but I've got all of these just slightly loose right now. A quarter turn is all you need to do this and to fix this. And what we're going to do is we're going to push together right here on the side of this motor and on the bottom of this, we're going to push it together. And I don't know if you can see that but there, there's actually some movement on this joint. And that is enough to bias it just slightly above or below this motor, this motor's axis. So, with the help of a friend, um, we're going to push this together and we're going to tighten these up and I'm going to show you now how it's perfectly balanced. We're going to push together this arm joint just like that and go ahead and tighten two of them with the help of a friend, kitty corner of each other on the top just to get it started. And then we'll tighten two more on the bottom. Okay, and now you can let go because um, that joint is pretty much tight, but we're going to go ahead and finish up tightening the other ones to snug it all up nicely. And okay, so now this thing should be perfectly balanced. Okay, so you saw us adjust this arm here. Um, I did one extra adjustment that I didn't show you um, as I double checked the balance before I started filming this, but I had to tweak this motor up a little bit more at this joint. And all I did for that was I loosened these three cap screws right here, um, quarter turn like I was doing, and then uh, this other one a little bit so that there's still some tension. It's probably doesn't make that big of a deal, but I had to tweak uh, I just with my hand tweaked this motor up in this joint and then retightened them. And I was able to do that all myself um, without the help of another person. So you could probably do that on both of these independently without the help of another person um, if you don't have someone around to help you do this. But um, there is now a little bit of a gap, really tiny gap down here. You can't, you can't you probably can't see from back there. Um, and that's all it took to balance this gimbal. Um, I'll show you that this is still balanced up here. Yeah, we're still good. All 
All right, so we know that this axis is still balanced. And now we're going to go down to here. This was the problem axis, And look at that. So we have achieved perfect balance on this gimbal. Um, this one down here is balanced. I will try and show you without, hopefully that's in frame, but still balanced. And um, yeah, that's all it took. So a little explanation on what we're doing here is that there's three motors and they all have three axes and all of those axes need to meet in one common point in space for it to work the way that it's designed to work. And because this arm is a two piece arm, um, basically in order for this to assemble properly, there has to be some amount of slop in this joint. Otherwise it won't assemble. It would be a press fit joint and you would never be able to put it together. So because there's a little bit of slop, when you go to assemble it, gravity is pulling this motor down and it's pulling this axis of this motor below the axis of this motor. And that then creates that tiny bit of uh, positional change in this axis creates a moment about this axis because the CG that we balanced out here is it's balanced here, but it's below this. You can't even see it because it's such a small change, but because these are such low friction motors, it's a big deal. Um, and so we're just bringing that axis back up in alignment with this guy. So that's why that problem exists and why pretty much every gimbal, every Crane 3S or an, any other gimbal that has a multi-piece arm is gonna have that exact same problem. And you're gonna have to account for it when you assemble. It'll, you'll probably have the same problem even without this extension piece. So um, I hope that that explanation is able to help everyone um, understand why the gimbal can't balance. It's not anything wrong with the gimbal, it's just a design problem and they probably should have done a better job explaining that that's what they have to do to fix it. So, um, so yeah, that's how you achieve perfect balance on the Crane 3S. I will say that I was having other problems with this gimbal, with this battery pack, when I first pulled it out of the box, um, I kind of alluded to earlier, and with this battery pack on, this, this tilt motor was freaking out no matter what, um, trim settings I did and no matter what motor strength I had, um, I would have to unplug, I would have to unplug the battery pack and just run off the internal batteries in order for it to work. Um, and I found that this needed a firmware update. Their current firmware as of this video is 1.80. And once I updated to that firmware, all of those problems went away um, with, in regards to motors freaking out with this battery pack and even without the battery pack on a higher strength, like too high of a motor strength for the payload that you're flying. So balanced gimbal, um, updated firmware, this thing will fly a light lens and it'll fly a six or uh, sorry, 200 to 600 on this with this body and I'm sure I don't have a bigger camera than that, but I didn't have any problems um, once I had the correct motor strength after, you know, matching the motor strength to the weight of the camera. I don't have any problems with this gimbal. So um, I hope all of those uh, pieces of advice um, help you balance and make sure that this gimbal is operating properly. Um, if there's any other questions or issues, feel free to ask and I'll do the best I can to help. So. Thank you.